Up to this point, we have focused mainly on the titans of fast oh. food and family chain restaurants. And what makes Shake Shack so special is its pedigree. <laughs> Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef, and no, I am not related to Neil Armstrong. Bruh. No, not that Neil Armstrong. This Neil Armstrong. We just both so happen to have glasses, bald heads, and we're both Asian. Today we are reviewing Shake Shack, and I am very excited for this episode because, well, Shake Shack is one of the more modern entries to this series. Danny Meyer is basically regarded as a culinary industry god. He's responsible for world-renowned restaurants such as Union Square Cafe, 11 Madison Park, Gramercy Tavern, and of course, what we're reviewing today, Shake Shack. Before I go on, I just want everyone to know none of my videos are sponsored. I paid for these items with my own money, ordered them anonymously. Also, I make sure to have a little something in my stomach so I'm not hungry because hunger will definitely affect my grading. Up to this point, we have focused mainly on the titans of fast food and family chain restaurants. And what makes Shake Shack so special is its pedigree. As I mentioned earlier, it is the brainchild of Danny Meyer and his amazing Union Square Hospitality Group. I'm probably a little biased because I have so much respect for all the restaurants that they have done. Obviously a fan, take everything I say in this particular review with a grain of salt. With that said, let's dive right in. So the burger that my wife got for me today came inside of this white paper bag. I did have Shake Shack recently and it came in one of those really nice craft colored clamshell boxes. That is not the case today, so I'm wondering what's that about. Probably this is a bag that's used maybe for something else. Maybe they ran out of product and then they used this as a substitute. Okay, so enough with the packaging. Inside of that packaging is another pack. Doesn't look very pretty because the bag had soaked up all the oil. Tell me I'm pretty. Of course that's gonna happen with greasy food, but something to point out, it just doesn't look pretty. That's okay. I don't expect a lot of these places to look pretty all the time. Looking at the burger, it looks pretty good. Now, I honestly don't remember seeing advertising materials like I often do for places like McDonald's and Burger King where the product is picture perfect. So I really have no basis of comparison. I can very clearly see the components of the burger just looking at it. So it is visually appealing. However, you know, the tomatoes are stuffed in the middle. So it's not picture perfect. I really do find it appetizing, especially seeing all this melted cheese. Cheese! Right at first glance, it's really nice. Looking at the bread, it is toasted on both sides. There is lettuce in here. There is shack oh. sauce. This is a brioche bun, or is it a potato? potato bun. I'm not 100% sure. I'm almost positive this is potato bread, number one because of the color, although brioche also has a yellow hue to it, but it doesn't have that shining glisten on, glistening texture on top normally found on brioche bread. It has some kind of egg wash put on top to make it shiny. So I'm pretty sure that this is potato bread, which for burgers and hot dog buns is my personal favorite. Let's take our first bite. First bite, I, you know, kind of was nitpicky in saying that the tomatoes were stuffed all the way in the center. Now I have a big fucking mouth. I took a big bite. I did get everything in that first bite. So I'm tasting the burger as intended by the wow. corporate pukes. Let's take another bite. One distinct difference between this Shake Shack burger and the other bigger chains I've had on this show so far, it's a little pink inside, meaning that this burger was cooked medium well. Meaning, one thing, they are very confident in the quality of their meat. And I can say it is very good quality. Yep, that's good shit. Texture wise, flavor wise, it's got depth. The grain is nice when I bite into it. I'm not biting into like chunks of connective tissue that I often find with other chains that use much cheaper meat. But there's one very important part in knowing a chain the size of Shake Shack is willing to give you a medium well burger is the meat is clean. The reason why big chains cook the shit out of their protein is because, well, it's probably not very clean. <laughs> You know, there's that movie where they uh, show the butchering process and you see all this blood and guts, really disgusting. It caused me to not eat meat for like 24 hours. But when you are processing protein, living flesh that fast, 
with internal organs that harvest microbes and bacteria and all types of stuff and you have to churn out all this meat at a certain speed and pace so that you hit the price point that you agree to with these gigantic chains buying thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of pounds of protein, the faster you work, the harder it's going to be to maintain consistency and cleanliness. So when I see this with a slightly pinkish hue, they're not drying it out to death, which is what happens when you cook it completely well done. But they probably source their protein from a place that they are confident works clean and efficiently, and they still pay a price that they feel can still hit the price point that this burger hits. Four bites into this burger, it's not a huge burger. I got the single rather than the double. I figured the single is is more of its flagship item, although I personally would order the double. With that said, I, I feel that the ratio of protein on the single to bun to tomato to sauce is really on point. I don't know if you can see this, but in a previous episode, I was knocking Burger King on the lack of caramelization on their bur on their protein. And this is something I already knew about Shake Shack. There is a hard sear on this burger. There is a crust over that protein. That means the griddle was really hot. So when they put that protein on there, just seared that outside, created a Maillard reaction, fancy way of saying it caramelized the protein, seared it, crisped it up, crisped, crisped it up, it condensed the natural flavors of that protein. And man, that hits the fucking mark that I am looking for from a burger. I just killed that burger like nobody's business. My gosh, was that delicious. Let's talk about a few things. Number one being price. This burger was just under $6, $5 and change. And another burger that I had that was maybe one third bigger than this was the same price. Earlier, I spoke about the quality of the protein and that clearly affected the quantity that Shake Shack was willing to offer you at basically the same price level. If I got the double stack two patties, that would have made the burger almost $9 after tax, which for me, I have no qualms with that because of the quality that I am receiving from this particular brand. I am going to have to make a reference to McDonald's. Why? Because McDonald's was the benchmark for every fast food chain for the longest time. McDonald's is a publicly traded company. There are so many chefs in the kitchen, so to speak, and they all have a fucking opinion and they all want one thing, a higher profit margin so it goes into their pockets. Now let me be very clear, I am not a fucking hippie telling you, oh, it's you, know, you should care about the person involved. No, I'm sorry, business is fucking business. You go get yours, go make that money. However, in the pursuit of chasing that money, if you start to degrade quality and still charge the same prices, there's obviously something wrong over there. With today's ultra competitive market, with people offering incredible product for incredible value, a place like McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's, they're all losing their footing because the quality's not there yet. The prices they're charging are comparable to somebody who's giving you way more quality for maybe 50 cents to a dollar more. I don't wanna make this a tirade against big fast food chains because again, it just comes down to business. All I'm saying is all these big companies, and I'm pretty sure they know it already, they need to fucking watch their backs for all these smaller guys coming up. So let's get straight to it. What do I grade this burger? One out of 10. One being the food that your ex made for you on that one date that tasted like complete trash, but you just kept eating it anyway because you felt like you wanted to make them happy. Oh, yeah, that looks like you're enjoying. Or 10 being mind-blowingly fantastic. Whoa. I give Shake Shack's Shack Burger. I'm pretty sure you can tell I'm gonna give it a high mark. I give Shake Shack's Shack Burger a nine out of 10. Guys, if you enjoyed this, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get alerted to every single time I put out a new video, a new video every Friday. Also in the comments, make sure you tell me what you want me to review next. Guys, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef. I am having a fucking blast making this show and I'll see you guys really soon. Shit.